Hey, what's up, DIYers? Mike Boards with the Mike Boards channel. Thank you for watching. Hey, we're talking drip line systems or irrigation systems and the backflow preventer specifically. And in the event that your backflow preventer is leaking, we are going to introduce you to the part that is most likely causing that leak. Let's take a look. All right, DIYers, quick break in the action. And as you can see, it is definitely leaking. And believe it or not, the most common time for this to happen is during the initial or first time startup during the spring season. However, it can also happen mid-season or at the end of the season. But again, you can see it's leaking. However, we have already performed the troubleshooting steps set forth by the company that designs this entire backflow preventer kit and system. And unfortunately, no luck for us, it's still leaking. However, in your case, if you have not performed all of the troubleshooting steps, you might not actually have to replace any parts. So with that said, definitely check out the link scrolling above. We will also post it down below in the comments and description. And in that video, you will see us run through all of the troubleshooting steps. And hopefully that's all you will have to do. Again, not replace any parts in the end. That would be awesome. However, in the event that you do all of the troubleshooting steps and it is still leaking, you will have to replace the internal bonnet and poppet kit that you can't really see right now. I mean, if you go up directly at the top underneath that top cap, you can see the upper portion of the bonnet. However, you can't see the internal poppet and additional seals that are inside. So again, it might be very beneficial to you to check out that troubleshooting steps and perform those steps and hopefully get your system to seal and stop leaking. However, for us, after performing all of those troubleshooting steps, we have determined that either the rubber O-ring or the rubber washer style seal or gasket has failed. And again, you can't see either of those in this picture. However, you will shortly in this video. And with that said, DIYers, before we move on, this is extremely important and imperative. If you have performed all of the troubleshooting steps and it is still leaking, don't let it continue to leak. Go ahead and fully shut the system down and stop all water flow out of your house and into this portion of the system and plumbing where it is going to leak. And really by doing that, it's going to do two things, maybe even more things. Number one, it's going to stop the leak because you're shutting the water off. And number two, it's going to save you money because it's not going to constantly leak water and constantly be activating or energizing or turning on your pressure tank, which that costs money. So again, shut the system down. And as we move forward in this video, you will see how we have got all of our valves configured to ensure our system is fully shut down and no water is flowing out of the house to this section of the plumbing and leaking on the ground. In addition, just shut it down for safety purposes. And what I mean by that is in the event that it is leaking and you can't get it to stop leaking, if you continue to allow it to leak over the next few days or weeks, it may cause additional damage to the system. Or even worse, its surrounding area, such as your home's exterior wall or the siding, or the absolute worst, the foundation. So again, shut the system down. DLR, so here we are inside the utility room and you can see that big one inch white pipe with the water shutoff valve. It is no longer in line with the plumbing and that is positioned in the fully off and closed configuration. And again, one inch pipe feeds water all the way out to the exterior system we just showed the leak at. And again, since it's leaking, we need to close it up and shut it down. Again, water shutoff valve is fully closed. And we have also unplugged our entire Hunter electronic control box and set the power black up top. All right, DIYers, leaving the utility room. We are always busy here at our DIY channel. Here is the workstation, and we are going to be rebunking and recarpeting our jet ski trailer bunks. And we got a lot of upcoming videos on our 1995 C2 XP, including reupholstering a seat. However, we are going to head back outside. Back outside to the exterior portion of the system and plumbing, and as I did inside, I have closed the valves, as you can see. Closed valve there, no longer in line with the plumbing. Feeding it upstream to the backflow preventer and out. Closed valve, and I've also closed that valve. And the system, again, is shut down until we get that internal part, which is the bonnet and additional parts and O-ring fixed. We are going to wait maybe a day or two for the new part to arrive. All right, DIYers, we are back with you, and the brand new part is here. Let's head to the workbench. Make our way around the trailer and to the workbench. And the inside of a Jet Ski 951 direct injection engine. And we did a full overhaul on that. However, here is the part. Down below in the comments and description will be a link on where to purchase this. Let's go and open it. 
Our DIYers here it is out of the box and unpackaged and we'll start at the very top. You've got the nut on the threaded stud and then your cap goes in between the nut and the upper bonnet. However, I can pull these two pieces apart. And the bottom part is your poppet. And that rubber seal there is very important. And it also came with a little bag of grease and lubrication. And you will use that during the install process of actually lubricating your rubber seal here, as well as the O-ring right here. And I'll put these two back together. And just a heads up, the inner spring right there, as the system operates and pulls the two pieces together, again, the upper bonnet and lower poppet, you can see that is where it creates that watertight seal. And unfortunately, ours needs to be replaced. So I just wanted to show you the part on the actual bench first. Let's head back outside. Here we are back outside to the exterior portion. And again, this little threaded nut here up top secures the top cap. And for your exact information, you have information on the top cap as well as the information right here. In our case, Febco T65-1. That is the number to type in to track down your replacement inner bonnet and pop it. And this entire part is right inside here. And again, that upper nut is that nut right there. The cap secures in between the nut on the thread of stud and the top portion of the bonnet. And this entire part is inside. And again, that little spring-loaded portion that connects or pushes the upper bonnet to the lower poppet and that O-ring right here, as well as the rubber seal, it's not sealing. It needs to be replaced. So again, I just wanted to show you the part right inside there. Taking a step back and DORs again, that is it. We hope this helps. And again, down below in the comments and description will be a link, not only how to troubleshoot your system to hopefully get it sealed without having to replace your inner bonnet and pop it. And in addition, if you cannot get it resealed, we will have a link down below in the comments and description on how to properly and safely replace your inner parts. Again, bonnet, O-ring, pop it, and rubber seal. Get that system working properly and as designed. From here, do us a favor, below the video, you will see that thumbs up icon, click on that, like the video, subscribe to the channel, definitely ring your YouTube bell, that would be very helpful to us. We'd really appreciate it. Thanks again for watching. Let us know if you have any questions, and again, in the event that you are going to replace the inner parts, we hope to see you at our video, where we can continue helping you out.